What is energy? Energy is in everything that surrounds us, from the land and sea to the air and the cosmos. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be conserved and transferred between objects and systems. The history of human energy consumption is long and complex. The first biomass source of energy was wood, which satisfied the energy demands for thousands of years from our early ancestors to present day. Approximately 5,000 years ago, communities began to explore other energy sources like wind, coal, oil, gas, and geothermal. The early Egyptians used oil, and the American Indians used coal to bake clay pots. The ancient Chinese used gas and geothermal heat to warm their homes. Still, prior to the Industrial Revolution, sun and wood provided most of the world's energy. Fossil fuels became an essential energy source as soon as humans first discovered coal during the Neolithic times. It wasn't until the 1700s that major improvements were made to the industry where people started using steam engines to assist with difficult tasks. By the 1800s, we started using natural gas, and in 1823, Samuel Brown developed the internal combustion engine. The consequence of using steamships and locomotives increased the demand for fossil fuels in the 1830s, but it wasn't until the mid-1900s that people began to consider the environmental issues that are associated with continued use of fossil fuels. The human population has been growing at an exponential rate, increasing by 75 million annually, and it's expected to reach 10 billion by 2100. Today, the population is well over 7 billion. It makes sense that our energy demands are also increasing due to both the rise of population and advancing technologies. We are quickly depleting our resources, especially fossil fuels. Oil, for instance, is projected to run out within the next 50 years. In addition, Pollution from burning fossil fuels leads to significant environmental problems such as climate change and ocean acidification. There are two types of energy sources, non-renewable and renewable. Non-renewable energy comes from sources that will run out or will not be replenished within our lifetime, or many lifetimes for that matter. This includes fossil fuels and nuclear energy. The majority of non-renewable fossil fuels are coal, petroleum, and natural gas. They can be formed when organisms die hundreds of millions of years ago that were buried under rock and sediment. These remains eventually turn into fossil fuels through pressure and heat, creating reservoirs all over the world that we now tap into today. Coal is a black or brownish rock that we burn to create energy. Its quality is ranked based on how much carbonization it has gone through or the process that organic materials undergo to become coal. Peat is the lowest rank of coal, going through the least amount of carbonization, and anthracite is the highest rank of coal, found in areas where there have been large movements of land, like mountain ranges. About 50% of the electricity in the United States comes from coal. The use of coal is currently advantageous because it is an abundant, reliable source of energy, for now. The disadvantage includes difficult extraction and the release of pollutants into the atmosphere. Mining is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world as well. Petroleum, also called oil or crude oil, is a type of liquid fossil fuel. Most of the world's oil is located deep underground, so we have to drill either offshore or through land to access it. Approximately half of the oil we extract is converted into gasoline, while the other half is used in commercial products such as nail polish, crayons, and hundreds of other items. Drilling oil can be advantageous because it's relatively inexpensive to do so, and it's also a dependable source of energy. However, burning oil still releases gases that are harmful to the environment, and drilling is always vulnerable to dangerous consequences like rig explosions or oil spills. The last type of fossil fuel is natural gas, which is primarily made up of methane. Natural gas is found underground, and to access it, we drill using a process called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking. This process uses high pressure water to split apart rocks and to release the natural gas that is trapped among them. We can turn natural gas into liquid form which is much cleaner than other types of fossil fuels. When burned, it only releases carbon dioxide and water vapor. However, extracting natural gas via fracking can cause environmental problems like earthquakes or contaminated drinking sources. Nuclear energy is also a type of non-renewable energy source. Although the nuclear energy itself is renewable, other resources used in the plant are not. Nuclear energy is produced by the fission or splitting of an atom. It provides about 16% of the world's energy and doesn't produce greenhouse gases. It does have a downside though, and that is that nuclear energy is difficult to harvest and power plants are complex facilities to both build and run. 
Furthermore, nuclear energy produces radioactive waste, which can be extremely hazardous and even fatal if there's prolonged exposure. One of the most publicized nuclear disasters was in Chernobyl in the Ukraine in 1986, when a flawed reactor resulted in widespread radiation exposure. And you're probably familiar with the most recent disaster at Fukushima in Japan due to the compounded issues from the earthquake and tsunami in 2011. Fortunately, however, great strides have been taken in order to make nuclear power plants safe. Renewable energy is typically defined as energy that comes from resources that are replenished within a human's lifespan. Today we will discuss five forms of renewable energy. Solar, wind power, hydroelectric, hydrogen fuel, and geothermal. Solar energy was first discovered in the late 1830s, which eventually led to the development of thermal and photovoltaic solar power. Thermal solar power concentrates sunlight, converts it to heat, and applies it to fluid in a steam engine. The heated fluid turns into steam that drives a turbine or other machinery. Photovoltaic solar power, on the other hand, uses cells made of silicon, which are organized in arrays. It produces power when sunlight strikes the arrays and creates an electric current thus converting solar energy directly to usable electricity. It is advantageous because it does not pollute, there are no major parts that can break down, requires little long-term maintenance, and has a lifespan of about 20 to 30 years. The most prominent disadvantage, however, is that this form of collecting and converting energy relies on the amount of available sunlight, which will differ seasonally and geographically. It is also expensive up front, so it only makes sense in specific locations. Wind power is documented to have been used as far back in history as 5000 BC, when people used sails to navigate the Nile River. Today, wind power works by allowing wind to push turbines to generate electricity, which is then directly coupled to generators. In the US, less than 1% of electricity is generated by wind. Interestingly, Denmark is the biggest wind power user, using wind power for 20% of their energy demands. It is a good source of energy because it provides skilled jobs, replaces harmful energy sources like fossil fuels, and is inexhaustible. However, wind can only supplement other energy sources for now because it is dependent on the availability of wind. There also have been controversies about bin building new wind farms in such places as Nantucket and Massachusetts, where residents complained that an effective wind farm would take up too much space, change the aesthetics of the landscape, as well as potentially disturb wildlife for birds and other marine life. Hydroelectric power uses water to produce electricity. When passing water it turns the turbine, that is connected to electrical generator. One popular application of hydroelectric is the building of dams on a large river that is a drop in elevation. The dam stores water behind the reservoir and near the bottom of the dam there is a small intake pipe. Water is pulled through the pipe due to gravity and turns a turbine propeller which is connected to a generator by a metal shaft. Power lines are connected to that generator and this is how power is produced and transported to homes and businesses. Hydroelectric power is good and that it doesn't use fuel, and that its energy source, water, is provided free by nature. Dams have gotten bad publicity though, because they are high investment costs and hydrology dependent. They also can be harmful to the environment, causing loss and modification of habitat, restricting fish passages, and changing stream water quality. Geothermal power is energy that is continuously created on the Earth's surface from the extreme heats contained in magma. When the heat naturally creates hot steam, it can be piped to the surface and used to turn a steam turbine and create electricity. We can also pipe water underground to extract the heat from the hot, dry rocks and pump it back up to turn a turbine. Using geothermal energy produces negligible emissions because no fossil fuels are used and is considered renewable because the water is pumped back into the ground. But as with any energy source, it does come with disadvantages. Although geothermal exists everywhere, it is not easy to extract unless it is close to the surface. It can also cause groundwater contamination when drilling or when returning water to below the surface. The last kind of renewable energy we'll discuss today is hydrogen fuel cells. William Robert Grove invented the first hydrogen fuel cell in 1939, which works by harnessing electricity from the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. They differ from traditional batteries that use solid reactants like cadmium or lead. Some advantages for using hydrogen fuel cells are that they can potentially decrease our dependence on oil and can be produced domestically. However, hydrogen cannot be the primary fuel source because of limitations in energy yields, but it can work in conjunction with other sources to meet our energy needs. 
So here's a quick question to make sure you've been listening. Can you identify which energy sources are renewable and which are non-renewable? The harnessing and management of energy has been developed throughout the history of human existence. However, factors such as population growth, the amount of available finite resources, emissions, and global warming have led to a new age of thinking in sustainable growth. Sustainable development of renewable energies aim at meeting the needs of the present without compromising the needs of future generations. We're standing in front of the new Integrated Science Complex at UMass Boston, which is a good example of sustainable development and energy use. The ISC will also be the first green building on campus to earn a LEED certification silver. Natural energy sources have stood the test of time and have been around for more than 3.8 billion years. It's ironic then that we call these energy sources alternative, since they are only alternative to non-renewable energy sources such as fossil fuels and nuclear energy. Each form of energy has its advantages and disadvantages. Therefore, it is pertinent that we make sound decisions as to what techniques to use, where and when. To be energy efficient means to be respectful to the environment and our natural resources. That is why biomimicry is so important to research and understand, because it's a new approach in science and technology that is based upon natural solutions that can be applied to human problems.